What's going on, everybody? Oh, oh, let me not break stuff. What's going on, everybody? Happy Easter Monday. Hope everybody is doing well, man. We got a lot to discuss today. Obviously, a great weekend of boxing. A bunch of different things happening. We got a lot to touch on, man. My DMs have been full. I've been seeing the comments. Uh, we moved the show up a day earlier, a little bit earlier in the day, man. A uh, bunch of different people, a bunch of different things that we're going to discuss, man. And I want to get everybody in for them to share their thoughts on everything that has happened this weekend, because there was a lot. But first and foremost, I appreciate everybody that will take the time to tune in. Those that will watch later, much love to each of you. Happy Easter. Hope the Easter weekend went well. Let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. Let me hit the comments real quick. Chris, what's going on, my man? I know, man. I caught, I caught you early today. I caught you early today. Maybe this will be the new time slot moving forward. Maybe we'll see. If this works better for you guys, uh, we can do that, man. So, Chris, good to see you. Uh, Rocket, what's going on, my man? Good to see you, man. Appreciate you. My apologies, everybody. My voice is a little bit raspy. Uh, let's get moving. Let's get moving. Pablo, what's going on, my man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Chris, I respect it. I respect it, man. I respect it. Lights out. What's going on, my man? Good to see you. Let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. Dante, what's going on, man? Good to see you. Appreciate you tapping in. Okay. Okay. Where do we want to start? You know what? I was trying to think about how we going to start, and it's only right that we start Friday. So let's start here. Let's start here. This is going to be more of a recap type of show, and then we'll close out with a quote of the week, and we'll get on out of here. A lot of fights to discuss, but I want to start here. This was interesting to me because there were some people who thought that uh, Yocasta got robbed. Any of you thought that? Did any of you thought that? I didn't think that personally. I thought Estrada looked sharp like a razor, man. She looked sharp like a knife. She looked very sharp. The It's tough to fight Estrada, man, because one second she's in Orthodox, one second she's in Southpaw. It's tough. To, it's tough to really keep up with her. But what I really liked was the head movement. I really like her defense, and I like the fact that she picked when to fight. She wasn't just coming in recklessly. She was coming in hitting the body, hitting the head, ducking and moving out of the way. Yocasta, man, she got popping her shots, right? So she's always, she's trying to land that right hand, trying to land that big shot. But to me, I don't, I didn't see a robbery. I watched it again. I didn't see a robbery. I thought it was 6-4 Estrada for me. Thought it was a spectacular performance coming off of her last fight where she did not look so good against Ud uh, Utica. And she was coming off a little bit of a surgery. So there was a lot of questions that was coming into this fight for Estrada. People hit me in my DM saying, Akeem, bro, have you seen the press conference? Estrada looks, she looks worried. I'm like, man, don't, don't pay too much attention to that. I thought it was a great fight. I really enjoyed the fight. I didn't see a robbery. I personally had Estrada six rounds to four. Undisputed. Do we get a rematch? I mean, probably not. But... Would like to see it. But again, I didn't see a robbery. What did you guys see? Let's go to the chat. Let's see what everybody else is saying. Again, this was a very, very, very good fight, man. I really like the performance. Uh, we're going to get there. We're definitely we're definitely going to get there. We're definitely going to get there. I scored Estrada 6-4 in Estrada a very close fight. But in my opinion, she just edged it. I, 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 I saw it the same way, Chris. I saw it the same way. Uh, hey, what's going on, my man? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Thank you for tapping in. Comparative fight. But Estrada clearly won. I, I thought the same thing. I didn't see any robbery. Um, Estrada will step up like flyweight. Now she's become undisputed. Man, the sweetness of being undisputed. The paydays are going to be a lot better. <laughs> she's going to be getting a lot more money. And it's also good, man. It's, it's, it's good that we're seeing more undisputed champions. You know what I'm saying? Like we're seeing not to, not all the belts scattered out. We're seeing one person has all the belts. That's what I want to see. That's what I like to see. So shout out to Estrada. I didn't see a robbery. I'm glad that many of you thought the same thing. Close fight. I saw Estrada winning. I love your Costa attitude. Man, I didn't like your Costa's uh, 
coach, what she was talking about post interview, like she was taking things. She now I know her and Estrada, you know, they got a history, but even in the interview, she was saying, you know, Estrada's taking it too personally. And then in the post fight uh, interview, seemed like she was the one that was taking it personal, saying, man, she got robbed, this and that. I thought more people saw Estrada winning than Yocasta winning at the end of the day. It is what it is. So we move forward. Uh, I went off on Dora Moneyline at Method of Victory. Uh, if Roly would have made it to the final, Bella would have won 5K. Man, we're going to get there, man. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Be patient with me. Be patient with me, man. I know we want to talk Roly and Pitbull. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Let's go here. Let's keep it pushing. Oscar Valdez, man. Shout out to Oscar Valdez. One of the most interesting things to me, right? I like to see the post-fight interview, the post-fight, their raw emotions. And you could see that this fight, it, it meant a whole lot to Oscar Valdez, man. The emotion that was going through his head, coming back off of a fight against Navarrete and him getting pummeled by Navarrete, eyes swollen. That type of war, that type of fights does something to you. You remember when Teofimo fought Sando Martin and he said, man, do I still got it? Those are the type of performance that Oscar Valdez was probably asking himself after he fought Navarrete because, man, he gave everything that he had. He hit Navarrete with some shots, but Navarrete ate those shots and kept pressing forward. So there was a bunch of questions going in for Oscar Valdez, maybe not for you, but for me, right? But I still think he has some good fights left in him. I don't think he was chopped up, chopped liver. I was getting a crazy amount of DMs saying, Key, man, Wilson going to stop Valdez. He's chopped liver. Valdez, when the fight started, the thing with him, man, is he fights so stiff. You know what I'm saying? Like he fights so uh, uh, with so much pressure on him. You can tell. And that's how he fought in this one, but a little bit more controlled. But you can see the damage of his fight with Navarrete because when, when Wilson was hitting him after the first round, did you see how red Valdez's face was? Scar tissue from his face was just, it, 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 scar tissue in his face, man, it, it wasn't looking so good. He just looked red, looked, looked really, really damaged, even though he wasn't getting hit too, too much. But Wilson, to me, man, a lot of heart. Right. You can tell how much he wanted it. You can tell how much he tried to do everything to win it, man. And a second opportunity on the big stage to seize the moment, you know, it, it, it just wasn't his night. I always just felt like Oscar was the bigger puncher. I felt like if you're going to beat Oscar Valdez, you are going to have to take him out completely. I didn't think Wilson was as big as a puncher as Navarrete, nor the type of fighter that Navarrete was. I thought Wilson was skilled. Absolutely. But I didn't think he was on the same level of, as Oscar Valdez personally when I was doing the breakdown for the video. And to see how much it meant to Valdez, man, it was great to see, right? Because he was counted out, took a beating. And for him to come back and get the stoppage, man, you know, it, it, it show, goes to show that he still got some more good fights in him. I thought it was a great Friday card foreshadowing to the great things that we were about to see on Saturday. So what'd you guys think about Oscar Valdez? What'd you think about Liam Wilson? Uh, okay. Let's, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, what's going on, man. Good to see you. This looked like that Valdez that fought Burchell. Amazing, man. He looked, he looked, he, he looked great. He looked great. He looked great. He looked great. Uh, let me go back a little bit here. I don't want to miss anybody's comments. We're going to get to everything. We're going to get to everything today. Uh, <laughs> appreciate you, Chris. Your casa's coach, no matter what she said, a uh, very good coach though, doing really good with Alan Garcia. Yeah, man. She's very, she, she was giving very sound advice. Absolutely. Uh, I had Valdez by KO. I felt Valdez was going to knock him out too. Uh, Man, Liam could have made it so easy if he played it smart. You think so? You think so? I don't I don't know if he would have been able to outbox Valdez for the 12th round, man. I feel like all the fight, I think at some point he was going to engage. 
you know, ego, ego gets in the way sometimes. And he would have needed to stop Valdez to get a victory over Valdez. So I feel you. I was surprised with Valdez's performance. I thought we would once see a wash version from the Mexican. You know, I can absolutely understand why many would think that and why many would say that. Like, I, I get it. I get it. Especially after the performance against Navarrete, it all seemed would be like it would make sense. So I get it. Absolutely. I get it. I had Valdez in 10th round, but he did it earlier. Wilson defense is just not good enough, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. I agree. Um, and I don't think he has the chin like many people think he does, man. Uh, Wilson started well, but decided to fight Valdez. You, you know what I'm saying? Hey, that ego gets in the way sometimes, man. You got to fight a disciplined fight against the guys who can punch and guys who are top that division, man. You can't you can't go in ego field. You really got to fight a disciplined fight. Foster would beat Valdez, in my opinion, future matchup by top rank, man. Uh, man, <laughs> shock is a beast, man. Shock is a beast. Great fights at 130 for sure. Uh, stick a move, use some movement. That belt would have been his. Yeah, I feel, I hear you, man. I'm I'm just not so sure. I'm just not so sure. Uh, I think it's a joke that this became WBO interim title, but that's boxing, man. Honestly, there's so many belts going around. I stopped keeping track of them. Like I don't even think belts really matter anymore. Honestly, in my opinion, man. Uh, hey, Seuss, what's going on, man? Good to see you. I picked Liam. I completely understand why you would, man, for sure. I feel like the interview with Wilson in the ring after the fight was a bit rude. Man, I don't like when cats, like, get interviewed after they get stopped or after it's a loss because they're not really thinking about uh, it's going to be an emotional answer or it's going to be a far left answer because they're – rattled you know what i'm saying like they're not in the right headspace you're just like you i've been preparing for this fight for the past three to four months and it didn't go in my way i don't want to talk to anybody you know so i do think they got to do a little better job with that man but again you know they are doing their job right and there's always somebody in their air saying yo go ask them this so i've learned in the world of sports media sports journalism to just you know, while I don't like it, they got a job to do. And someone's in their air telling them, yo, go ask them this question. Uh, the same thing with Roley, which we'll talk about uh, very shortly here. Liam Wilson refused to listen to his corner. He started off OK, but then he tried slugging it out, man. Again, I, I, absolutely. Uh, discipline. You got to stay disciplined, man. You cannot. Boxing isn't an emotional thing. If you fight emotional, you're going to get clipped. and It's not going to work out in your favor. You can't be emotional. You can't do it. Uh, Big Tyrone, what's going on, my man? Good to see you, my brother. Uh, good stuff this past weekend, man. Uh, one of the best weekends of boxing that we've had in a while with so many different things happening, man. Appreciate you, my brother. Uh, Ballet has problems with lateral movements. You know, to me, you know, she 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 does well when 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 women are right in front of her. That's That's her style. That's her style, right? The aggressive style, being on the front foot. She's more powerful than most of the people that she's fought. She's physically strong. Like you saw Estrada couldn't really keep her off of them when they were in close, but that's her style. And so it was going to be trick fighting, fighting Estrada, man. Uh, people call the Valdez Liam fight an early stoppage. Uh, you know, man, everybody will have their own opinions, man, especially if there's money on the line, right? I love my boxing, man, but this past weekend was hectic, man. You can say that again. You can say that again, but this is what we like to see. I like hectic if we get in some good fights, man. Uh, Wilson was getting hit at will and wasn't even fighting back at a certain point, man. You know, it looked like he lost confidence past a certain point, man, because, you know, he was doing well early using his length and all of the stuff that he said he was going to do. But then you get into the ring and it's just like, yo, it's a different game plan. It's a different thing. Uh, man, uh, it was boxing from Wednesday, man. Oh man. Joseph Adorno. I forgot about that fight, man. Joseph Adorno. What are you doing? What are you doing? Shout out to Nicholas Walton for getting it done. But Adorno, man, that was your fight to lose and you lost it. Uh, I think with the time, the damage would have added up after the first two rounds, Valdez's face looked bad. It did, man. It, 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 it absolutely did. Again, that's all the scar tissue from him just taking so many different punches but we saw a better defensive version of Oscar Valdez, man. So, you know, 
when he stopped Burchell, man, he was using his foot, using his footwork, you know, backing up and still moving. So, uh, but yeah, that scar tissue, you know, that's just the accumulation of boxing, man. He, 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 uh, he gonna have a lot more. <laughs> he gonna have a lot more. Uh, interview with Roley was even more egregious. Oh my man, we gonna get to Roley, man. We gonna get to Roley, but yeah, that that one. But you know, I don't blame her as well too. I'm sure somebody was in her ear saying, "Yo, go ask him this one." And Roley looked days, but we'll get there. We'll save that. We'll save that. We'll save that. Sucks for Liam. What's next for Valdez, man? You know, the thing I like about Valdez is he he doesn't back away from big fights, man. He doesn't back away from big fights. I mean, you fought Bichel, uh, you fought Wilson now, you fought Shakur, you fought Navarate. Like, <laughs> he's got a nice little resume building up, even though he hasn't won all of them. But uh, uh, I think I think we definitely go for the unification fight, man. Maybe shock. You know, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, yeah, everybody got a belt these days. I don't know what half of them are for. Man, I don't even... I don't even really care no more about the belts, but everybody says they want to be champion, but let's be honest, right? It, it's, it's, it's about the payday. It's about the payday. Then once you get the payday, then it's let's unify the belt. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm going to get to the rest of the comments, but I want to keep things going. I want to keep things moving. Let's go over to the PBC card now. Let's start here to Sergei Bolchuk. Unanimous decision of victory over Brian Mendoza. Uh, we talked about how messed up uh, Valdez's face looked from all that scar tissue beating up. Mendoza, his face looked bad too after the first round. This was the best version of Sergei Boachuk that I've seen, man. I got to be honest with you. Uh, I didn't think he was going to be able to put a beating on Mendoza like that. Yeah, no, Mendoza doesn't have the best defense like that. He does get hit a lot, and it goes to show how tough of a chin that man has because Boa Chuck hit him with some stuff and didn't take him out. But Boa, but Boa Chuck's pressure, man, and consistency uh, and, and, and the work that he was able to do from in close, man, I thought it was a really good performance from him. Uh, uh, Mendoza's no joke. I mean, Boa Chuck is used to hitting cats and guys dropping. And Boachuk hit Mendoza with everything, and Mendoza was just there. Yeah, his face at the end, I mean, that cheek was swollen. Like, that was crazy, you know? <laughs> that the cheek was crazy. But another great performance for Boachuk. I didn't think his last couple performance was the greatest, but against a guy like Brian Mendoza, where even if you don't stop him, I mean, he beat him up pretty dang good every single round. So shout out to Boachuk, man. Uh, I thought Brian Mendoza was going to pull up, pull it off. And he hit him with a shot that almost rattled Boachuk. But, you know, I don't think he had enough energy to really put forth no real, you know, spurt and flurries of shots because he was taking a beating, man. So shout out to Boachuk, man. Uh, uh, he put himself in a nice position, um, interim champ now. So, you know, now... I'm not going to say he gets to call the shots a little bit, but he can demand some things a little bit more. Um, so going to be very interesting, man. Uh, what, what, what would what do you guys think is next for Boa Chuck? What do you think next for Mendoza? I just want to hear your thoughts on that. Was this one of those performances that puts Boa Chuck in the mix, especially in that division, man? Because uh, that division got a lot more interesting now. You know what I'm saying? So what do you guys think about that fight? Let me go back to the comments. Uh, let me try to pick off where I left off. I don't want to miss anybody. Uh, I think I left off here. Oh, I answered that one, picked off that. Uh, poor man was clearly concussed and confused. Kriegel was definitely a jerk, though. Man, oh, man, some of the commentary this weekend, man. Like, I usually, you know, uh, everybody always sees the fight differently. Absolutely. I can always respect that. But, man, some of these casts is just so one-sided. They be talking about one guy and not – talking about what the other guy is doing. You know what I'm saying? So, man, sometimes commentary is very, is very biased, man. Eric, what's going on, big dog? Good to see you, man. PBC card accidentally put together an amazing card. Man, this was uh, a great matchup. Like, matchmaking at its finest was, was very, 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 very well done, man. Uh, one of my favorite cards that I've seen in a while, honestly. Uh, don't get me started. I don't know. He should... <laughs> As you wish, my man. We will not get started about Adorno. Uh, I wanted to bet Walters beating Adorno, but my bookie did not have the fight, man. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, respect the pit bull cruise. He's better than I give him credit for, man. Still need to see some more. Hold this thought, my man, Eric, man, because I got the same, I, I echo some of those same sentiments, man. Uh, the commentary always says that Valdez is bad on his back foot. But this and Burchell were both him more on his back foot and successful. Yeah, you know, you know how the commentary is sometimes, bro. You know, it's, it's you know, it's. Uh, I don't always know what they're seeing, but again, they're seeing things completely different than some of us. Uh, it, it it is what it is, man. I thought Valdez fought. This was one of the most complete performances of Valdez that we've seen since he's lost, even prior before that. I also missed that on Fraser Clark yesterday. Man, we're going to get there, but man, what a fight. What a heavyweight fight, man. Uh, surely WBO title becomes vacant with Navarrete stepping up to lightweight to face Francia for WBO lightweight title. Honestly, Navarrete should have moved up a couple years ago, man, because he, he he's, a, he's a big cat, man. This was a sad performance from Mendoza. It seems like he takes a beating and hopes to find that one. Yeah, uh, and, and his corner was saying that as well, too. Once it got to, like, the eighth round, it was like, yo, we're going to have to land a big shot. You know what I'm saying? But he's been in some wars, man. Um, but he's always going to give you a quality performance as best as he can. He may not be the best technically sound guy. He may not be the most skilled guy. But he is fun to watch, even if he does take a lot of shots. You know what I'm saying? So uh, shout out to Mendoza, man. Uh, Boachuk beat Mendoza worse than Zoo. A little more from Boachuk, and a stoppage was coming. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's tough to say, man. It's tough to say because uh, Mendoza took some shots, bro. Like, he got clipped up. You know what I'm saying? But he he, he was breaking down a little bit. Uh, disappointed in Mendoza, man. Sometimes, sometimes you get into the ring, and there's just nothing you can do. You know what I'm saying? You get into the ring, and a man is just – a man or a woman is just – it's just better on the night. And that was it. I'm saying that was it. I finished fourth this week in the Fantasy Boxing League. I mean, oh, man, they got Fantasy Boxing League? Oh, man, you got to tell me a little bit more about that. That sounds fire, bro. Uh, Serge is super slow and lacks defense. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, his offense is his defense, and sometimes that's enough. Boa Chuck Castano, that's a name I have not heard of in a while. Brian Castano. Yeah, I like that. What, what 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 is Castano doing, man? I haven't heard his name in a while. Haven't heard Andy Ruiz's name in a while as well, too. That's another story. Uh, Fandora and Cruz surprised me, man. We gonna get there, man. I know. I know everybody got a lot of thoughts on that, man. We gonna get there. We gonna get there. Uh, all of Boachuk's fights have been stoppages. Was his first win on points. If it was beating, and again, Boachuk has WBC interim. Surely he should be mandatory. But they love picking big names like. Crawford. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Boa Chuck, though, man. We're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep it moving. Uh, what do we think about this fight right here? Honestly, man, uh, I had Martinez winning this fight by stoppage. Um, I wasn't really too sure how good Cordova was, but I was actually very impressed by Cordova. Uh, the, 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 the belief and the confidence to not go down when things are not in your favor. This man kept punching. You know, it reminded me of what Robson Conceição was doing against Emmanuel Neverate. Conceição was just peace. He was throwing everything, whatever he could, to keep Neverate off of him. And that's exactly the same correlation that I got of what Cordova was doing. He was just throwing everything, staying busy, trying to stay consistent, trying not to get caught on the back foot. Martinez is a guy where, man, you know, there are there are certain fights, right? And you've seen it with different guys before where you know, you can see what their game plan is and where their head is. Martinez in that fight immediately, look, he was not coming around to 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 win on points that man wanted to win by stoppage he was coming forward hands hands drop trying to walk forward taking a shot he didn't care about cordova's power he didn't care about none of that so you have to kind of adjust your mind differently in the sense of martinez isn't he's not coming in 
to look pretty. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not coming in to focus on the sweet science of boxing. He's a wild card. Martinez reminds me very similarly to Neverate. Like, sometimes they look great. Sometimes they look a little off. But they're effective in what they do. And Martinez, man, you either hate him or you love him, man. <laughs> you either hate him or you love him. But I was really surprised by Cardova and the fight that he put forth. He, except in that last round, I don't know what the heck he was doing. He was boxing on the outside like he was winning the fight. Like he was boxing as if he got the nod. And I'm just like, bro, you need to win these rounds. You need to win 11. You need to run 12. You can't take your foot off the aggression. And I felt like he did that. And Martinez, you know, I thought Martinez uh, won it by unanimous decision personally, but it is what it is. But a good performance, um, a nice follow-up past Sergey Boachuk's fight, man. So what do you guys think about this fight, man? Were you guys impressed by Cordova? Uh, what do you think about Martinez? What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Uh, let me pick back up from where we left off. Uh, commentary over here, our bias. I turn commentary off these days. Yeah, maybe I need to start doing that myself. Uh, it's Boachuk's best win on his resume. Great performance, but worry about him against top guys with his defense. Yeah, absolutely. He's definitely uh, a, a come forward, one dimensional type of guy, but so far he's worked with it. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to break those habits sometimes. Fantasy League boxing, <laughs> man, I didn't even know that was a thing. So my man Eric was 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 showing us something different. Uh, let me know how we can get involved in that, man. That looked fun. Eris Landy Lara, the veteran, still knocking fools dead. Uh, good to see. Shout out to Eris Landy Lara, man. Great story, perseverance. Uh, Martinez Cordova could have been a draw, to be honest. Wow, I didn't I didn't see it like that, but I can understand. I can understand. Uh, the scorecards are a joke. Martinez won that way more convincingly than what the cards read. Yeah, I thought it was a unanimous decision victory for Martinez. Uh, but, you know, say in the comments, you can start to see different opinions on it, right? Martinez won the fight by three or four rounds, in my opinion. He was just better. That's what I saw. We all have different opinions. Yeah, uh, again, I thought unanimous decision as well, too. That's how I saw it as well, too. Other people see it different, though, of course. We have to be grateful uh, Jason Martinez attended the fight. thousand percent. <laughs> I predict Boa Chuck versus Spence gets made for WBC interim title. It's basically going to be a semifinal. Uh, Fundora Crawford, Boa Chuck, Spence. Those are really good fights, man. And I got some news that I saw before we jumped on the live here. Eric says the fantasy league is free. So maybe we all got to do a little bit more research and try to find that. Uh, speaking of Aristotle Lara, let's keep things moving. Uh, look, man, uh, Zarafa was talking that real good talk. You know what I'm saying? Talking that real good talk. Lara, he's too old. He hasn't seen a guy like me. I'm hungry. I want it. Absolutely. You're supposed to talk your talk. Thousand percent. But man, Aristotle Lara, man, shout out to him. 40 years old and still got that snipe in the left hand. 40 years old and still is living, as his nickname says, the American dream, right? If you know his story, you understand where that comes from. But, you know, the two years off, I think sometimes the older that a fighter gets, uh, it actually it, it helps some of them, not all of them. But not fighting as much keeps your body a little bit fresher. And for Eric, for Aristotle Lara, it seems to be proven true, at least in this situation. Um, so I felt like Lara was going to win by, by, by decision. But when he stopped him like that in two rounds, I mean, that left hand was lethal. That left hand was vicious. So not too much to really say about this other than Aristotle Lara, man. Uh, he still got some fight left in him. You know, he still got some fight left in him. And for that, you know, we can't, we can't, we can't count him out, man. We can't count him out. Uh, Lara is boxing Benjamin. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like Lara, man. I like Lara. Always loved Lara. Thought he could have won against Jared Hurd. Man, I thought Lara was unlucky in a couple fights. You know, mainly, especially that Canelo fight, but he was never going to get that against Canelo. But I thought I thought Lara was unlucky in a couple fights. 
Uh, both Lawrence and Alfred both denied for two years. Yep. I like that knockout. So brutal. I'm not convinced by middleweight champions. They are all beatable. Yeah, I think that division is absolutely wide open. I think it's wide open. Um, and and it, it has been for a couple of years now, man. Uh, Laura versus Elijah Garcia in tank card, man. That was I was looking forward to seeing Elijah Garcia and Kyron Davis, man. I was a little, you know, a little bummed about that, man, because I like Garcia. And for that fight not to go through, you know, maybe we get to see that again. But Laura Garcia is a good fight, man. Uh, you know, who knows, man? Sometimes you can slide in. Sometimes the delayed fight is better than the current fight. But I, I, I hope Kyron Davis, you know, still gets an opportunity and, and, and hopefully still got a little bit more money. You know, it would hate to do all that and not get compensated for it. PBC needs to, PBC needs to stop, needs to quit protecting Lara, uh, Jamel Charlo at 160 and put them in with Janet Beck uh, so we can collect those belts. I have Janet Beck becoming undisputed at 160 if he gets those fights. Man, I, I completely hear you. And I may be on the other side of this, man, but personally, like, I'm not fully sold on Janet Beck. You know, I know that may sound crazy to a lot of people, but like, I know he's good. But I thought Bentley beat him. You know what I'm saying so. I, I'm personally not a hundred percent sold on Janabek, but that could just be me. I pick Lara for money. Uh, majority draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought it was gonna be close too. Like I thought, I thought it was gonna be split decision, unanimous decision. But man, Lara had other things planned. Uh, I see Lara facing Elijah Garcia next, but like to see him chase after Charlo WBC belt or fight in unification. Uh, I agree, but who knows what Charlo was doing, man? Uh, Z <laughs> Did he ever? All right, let's keep it pushing, man. Let's keep it pushing. Uh, let's go. Let's go here. Let's go here. I got a bunch of different comments here that 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 I definitely want to answer, man. So this fight, this fight came on a couple. A couple hours before the fight, my, my boy hit me. He said, Akeem, bro, I saw I saw the video, man. Uh, uh, you think I should bet money on Roley? Like, no, don't bet no money on don't bet, don't bet no money on Roley. <laughs> don't bet no money on Roley. In the video, I gave Roley the benefit of the doubt, man. I've gave given Roley a tough time a bunch of different times, man. And you know, I'm not going to Roley been getting bashed for the past. 24 hours, 48 hours. He's been getting bashed for the past 48 hours. Uh, I'm not going to take that route. I'm going to do things a little bit different. Um, and, and, and obviously, I'll get to everybody's comments, man. Everything, everything you think about this fight, let's talk about it now. Uh, I'm not going to go the path of bashing Roley. I gave him the benefit of the doubt, even though I didn't expect him to beat Pitbull. But let me talk about the good. Well, let me reverse it back. Roley gets all the backlash because the man, you know, he, he he talks a big game. He talks massively. You know, Roley knows how to sell a fight, man. He going to talk heavy. He going to do his thing, whatever the case may be. So everything that he says, hey, you got to take it. He, the backlash comes with it. You know what I'm saying? So he got to he got to he got to eat it. You know what I'm saying you got to talk it on the chin. So let's talk about the good of Roley for me before we get to the comments. Um I thought Roley did a much better job moving than I've seen him before. You know, he was moving the head a little bit, not too much, but he was using his foot, footwork to move a little bit more. I said, okay, Roley, I see you've been working on some things. I see you've been trying to learn a little bit more about being a complete fighter, trying to develop. I see what you're doing. But the moment that he got clipped with that overhand shot by Pitbull Cruz, his legs was like Bambi on ice, man. Them legs was 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 split apart. And I was just like, oh, man, Roley. <laughs> Roley, you going down, bro. Roley, you going down, man. But he didn't go down yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to give him that credit, you know. I got to give him that credit because he did show a lot of heart, did show a lot of will, did show a lot of determination. But... Roley, to me, a guy who is usually generally a confident cat, right? Always a guy, man, I'm about to stop this cat. And you have to believe that. Absolutely. you got to believe that. But to me, man, I saw a Roley that lost confidence. Like he hit Cruz with everything and Cruz did not get discouraged. 
Like, I don't know what type of chin is our Cruz has. I don't know what, like, his face is made out of. But that man, and even at 140 now, it seems that that chin is even more solidified. What is stronger than granite? Like, we're talking, like, metal? Like, like that man's chin is ridiculous. But I saw a roadie who lost his confidence and a roadie who was just trying to survive and trying not to get stopped. Uh, I thought he did a better job of trying to do something different, trying to box a little bit, but you know, he is who he is. He, he is who he is. And talk about Pitbull Cruz. Now Pitbull Cruz, he is who he is. <laughs> It was the same Pitbull Cruz that we're accustomed to seeing, except he did look a lot more in shape physically, a lot more chiseled, more cut. Maybe 140, you know, he, he hit the gym a little bit more, but it was the pressure of Cruz and the granite chin of Cruz that makes him so tough to beat. It was the same Pitbull Cruz. I didn't, I didn't think any differently of Cruz. I didn't think any better of Cruz. It was the same old Cruz. It was the same old Roly with a little bit of tweaks here. But man, uh, shout out to Pitbull Cruz. Um, he is now putting himself in a nice position. He's becoming a very popular fighter. Uh, I like that he's fighting. You know, he's calling out all these different names, all these different things. Uh, but, you know, what I didn't like, going back to what someone said about the, uh, the interview, man, uh, I did not like the fact that they interviewed Roley as he was trying to gather what the heck just happened because he looked completely out of it. You know, uh, we all knew that the easiest belt for anybody coming up to 140 is fighting Roley. You know, and, and 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 that's you know, I try not to knock cats, right? Like I try not to do that, but you know, we gotta keep a spade a spade, like we know that. But um, yeah, tough, tough loss for Roly, man. Uh, uh uh, you know, I I I think this one hurt him quite a bit. I think this one hurt him quite a bit, but you talk heavy and you don't back it up. This is what comes with it, man. This is what comes with it. Uh, but ultimately, uh, I thought. Pitbull did his thing. I liked his performance. I'm not surprised by any of it. Pitbull is who he is. That is his style. But man, uh, that 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 chin is something serious. Bro. That chin is something serious, bro. That chin is something serious. Okay, let's go to the comments. Let's go to the comments. Let me try not to. Let me see where we left off. Uh, getting out, getting put to bed by senior citizens, old ninjas slapping young ninjas. Ah, imagine that. Where are you from? Ah, oh, man, I feel you, man. I feel you. I will keep on saying I'm so frustrated with Eubank Jr. over here. He can be, he can win middleweight world title, but sad thing is only cares about money and losing it in poker wasted career. And the thing is that man's got, he's got, he's got money already, bro. Like he doesn't need none of that. Well, now, I mean, you can always, you, you don't need more, but he just wants more. Currently, my favorite 160 fighter is Carlos Bronco Adamas. Man, he's a beast of a fighter. I hope to see. I would just like to see him fight a little bit more. Uh, nice win by Cruz at 140. I'm unsure if he can be Haney, Matias, or Teofimo. Uh, I don't think. Look, man, I don't think Cruz is. I still don't think Cruz is all that. Like, his style is problematic. But I don't think he beats Haney. I don't think he beats Matthias. I don't think he beats Teofimo. I don't think he beats Tank. Uh, and I don't think he beats a couple other guys. But his style, that aggression, it is problematic. You got the pressure and you got a chin like Matthias does. You know, it makes you dangerous. It makes you dangerous. Lara versus Andre would be great. Uh, I, if they weren't trying to make a sacrifice to David Morrell, Boo Boo must have really pissed someone off in the industry. Man, that uh, he's in, man. Andre coming off two tough fights, bro. Go, going into this one against Morel, that's two tough fights. Roley was on ice skates tough, but, man, he needs work. Man, uh, hey, maybe we see hey, maybe we see uh, 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 Roley and Joseph Adorno next. Roley got to get back in the win column. He got to get back. He got he to get back that confidence. He got to get back doing something. Brilliant win for Cruz. I'm not shocked. I, could, I couldn't see how Roley could keep him off of him. Stoppage win for Cruz was guaranteed. You know, that's the thing. I don't think anybody was too crazy surprised by this one, man. Cruz Barroso, uh, that would be very interesting, man. Uh, that, 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 yeah, that'd be interesting. 
not really relevant, but will we get a prediction for Pacheco fight this weekend? Uh, yeah, man, that's coming tomorrow. That's coming tomorrow, man. A lot going on in the schedule, uh, but that's coming tomorrow. This could be an interesting fight, man. Uh, if Roley would have made it the final, Bella would have made 5K off of 50. Man, that would have been big. Man, he tried, bro. <laughs> he definitely tried. He definitely tried. Uh, this was um, another positive about Roley, man. He went down trying to fight. Like, I saw a great effort from Roley. He's just, he's, you know, it's, yeah. it is, he is who he is. You know what I'm saying? He is who he is. I like Roley's performance for the most part. The ref not allowing him to clinch, I thought it was criminally unfair. Devin clinching so much, I count as part of his comp. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, bro. That's funny. Yeah, man. I don't know, man. Uh, when you talk so much, man, you talk heavy like that, everybody wants to see you lose. Uh, I thought Roley did a great job of trying to survive some of those some of those rounds, bro, because you could see he was physically gone. But again, like I thought I saw Roley try to box a little bit more, more than we've ever seen him. So he tried to be something different. He just didn't have it. His different just wasn't that great on the night. Pitbull, no jab. Yeah, Pitbull is never going to be a jabber, man. Maybe you might get one or two, maybe even 10 throughout the 12 round fight, but nah, th that man's coming to knock cats out. He trusts his chin so much that he don't even need to be coming through with the jab. That's just him. That's how far Cruz can go. Unfortunately for him, he ain't beating Hanny Matias or Teofimo. I don't think so either. Could we see Cruz versus Tank at 140 if Tank steps up? I don't know, man. I I, I stopped trying to think about what Tank is going to do. Uh, because when we think one thing, like, don't get me wrong. I like the Frank Martin fight, you know, uh, but I, 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 I we, <laughs> we just don't know, man. What's going on, man? Good to see you. Two new Mexican champions. Absolutely. Uh, appreciate you tapping in and checking in, man. Appreciate you. Pitbull will not survive versus top power hitter at 140 like Matias, Lodolfo Delgado. You know, as we've seen so many times in boxing, man, you can't. Your chin is not always going to protect you. But I tell you what, Matthias and Cruz, that's a very violent fight. Very violent fight. And I'd love to see it. Uh, but Matthias is fighting Liam Paro, so he got to get ready for that because Paro is no joke. Roley lost and the old Barroso made some cash stepping aside. Fair play. Shout out to Ishmael Barroso, man. Uh, let's see here. The Roley that box tank or Marinez using his jab and range. Would have beat Cruz. Losing Bullet as a coach was his worst move. Cruz hooked and overhand him to death. And when the shots landed, you know how that one goes. You know, I, I, I like the new coaching for Roley, man. Uh, I'm not going to say Coach Bullet wasn't a great coach for him. Um, but at least I saw Roley trying to do something different. You know what I'm saying? Trying to be different. Uh, but it just didn't happen. Maybe he should have took a different fight before this one uh, and then fought Pitbull after. Would it have been different? Who knows? We'll never know now. Cruz should either fight Matias uh, or Barroso next. Matias to unify the belts. Barroso because that man definitely deserves another crack at that WBA belt. Yeah, that would be interesting, man. I think Cruz has to stay busy. Uh, Matias is busy. He's going to fight Paro. So I would love to see. I'd love to see, it. you know, Barroso. Give him that fight. Give him that fight. I don't think Barroso has much time left anyway. Roley's team would have saved the trip because once he got in there, uh, they left him alone. Uh, Julio says that Martinez to defend the title with mandatory David Jimenez. Really interesting. Yeah, I got to say, I like uh, I like Martinez in that fight, man. No worries. Looking forward to it, man. Uh, I'm intrigued to see Cruz versus Haney. I can see Devin easy outboxing Cruz to a unanimous decision, but it would be a smart test to prepare Devin for a tank show down. You know, Pitbull Cruz has shown uh, that there is a style that can frustrate him and that can make him, you know, uh, even like very regular. Like Cabrera was outboxing him really well. Cabrera is just not as big as a puncher, not as sharp. But you have a guy like Devin Haney uh, who is – twice as sharp, technically sound, not going to make a whole lot of mistakes, knows how dangerous Cruz is. 
it, 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 that same similar style is not going to be a good fight for Cruz. And I just, you know, uh, the there's there's two of those guys that are crazy enough to engage with Cruz, and that's Teofimo gonna mix it up. But he's skilled; he can box. And Matthias, you know, he gonna he not gonna try to box. <laughs> he not gonna try to box. You know, so I think we're talking stylistically, it would be a better matchup for him to fight Matthias because they're not going to be chasing around each other. They're going to be right there. It would be a tougher one for him to fight Devin Haney and Teofimo, in my in my opinion. Uh, Cruz's low center of gravity would be something Devin might want to prepare as well as educated pressure. Absolutely. Absolutely. But Devin Haney at 140, man, been looking real good. Uh, uh, but we're going to see. Jay, man, what's going on, man? Yeah, man, we started early today and we started uh, a day earlier. So if this timeline works better for everybody, man, we can move it from the Tuesday show and make it the Monday show. Are you surprised? Didn't make. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I was expecting Mortala to win this fight by stoppage. Uh, but and then Ogini, man, he fought very well, man. He was in that fight. He helped his case because they're going to want to bring him back now because he put up a great fight. He didn't lie down. He gave it all in there. So I was surprised by Moritala, man. I was expecting Moritala to close out the show, uh, but, you know, he wasn't able to do it. Inactivity, I thought, played something uh, towards it as well. Uh, Bullet isn't a world-class boxing coach to me. Uh, I like Coach Bullet, man. I just think um, I think this was a better move for Roley. You know, as a complete fighter standpoint, man, give him a little bit something more. Um, last couple comments on Roley before we move forward. Uh, Ray Montala heard a couple times the African refused to go down, man. He's a tough cat. And Luigi is a tough cat, man. Give him credit for that. He has now, he's going to earn himself more opportunities, man, because of that performance. He didn't lie down. He didn't run. He tried to engage, tried to fight. I took more talent to win by decision. The fight going the distance, man. I'm sure you must have made a nice little payday on that one, man. If that's if that uh, if that was the outcome, more talent didn't look amazing this time around, but he wasn't that bad either. You know, I think it was just the inactivity, man. You know, because he he did do some good things, but the time off didn't really serve his case. PBC having a good card must be April Fools, man. It is April Fools, but that card was fire, man. <laughs> that card was fire. I'm not surprised how easily Haney schooled Regis Pro Gray's Pro Grade. Interesting. Yeah, man. Shout out to Devin Haney. Shout out to Devin Haney. Shout out to Devin Haney. Uh, I think the hey, what's going on, man? Good to see you. I think that performance from Maya Tyler will help him get bigger fights. He showed some vulnerabilities. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He did. But, you know, man, sometimes it's hard to get up for guys who are not up here. You know, and sometimes you fight down to your opponent and the performance isn't really what you thought it should. Uh, but I think next time around, we see a much better uh, Moratayo. Question, question for the chat. Do you prefer PBC or top rank cards? Top rank got a lot of the great up and coming fighters, man. Uh, top rank all day. Top rank all day. No, it was surprising. Venturing almost like they paid some of the top ranks match <laughs> makers. All right, let's keep it pushing. Let's go main event for PBC. What do we think about this fight? Man. Um, so I thought Tim Zhu was going to get it done. And this is the beauty of boxing, is we never know how it's going to play out. But I will say this, first and foremost, let's talk about Fundora. Uh, Fundora and his team and his coach, his dad, and the rest of the team, they must have heard through the grapevine. Everybody's saying, man, bro, you got to use your length. You got to use your size. You got to use your physical advantages to your advantages. Well, he did that. The man finally used the jab. The man finally took his time. The man finally created separation. The man finally stopped trying to bang on the inside as much. The man finally used his physical advantage to his advantage. And it's interesting that he did it for this fight, right? And But that was probably the, probably the game plan for Boachuk <laughs> as well, too. 
But what I will say about Fundora, man, is two things. Uh, I thought the game plan was great. The game plan was great. And I felt like he was very disciplined in this fight because when you're coming into a fight and you're known to do and fight a certain way and to be disciplined enough and to be coachable enough to say, yo, we've been training in camp this way. We're not going to revert back to the old way. Let's make sure we are fighting this way and being cautious. And Fondora was hurt. Dude's nose was broken, right? And he could have just said, oh, man, I got to panic. I'm going to come in. I'm going back to the old style because I'm in trouble. But the discipline that he kept and showed in this fight, very, very, very well done. Very, very well done, man. I was very impressed with Fondora. Um, Tim Zhu. Man, shout out to Tim Zhu because he could have not taken this fight. The best thing that happened for, for Fondora in this fight was Tim Zhu getting that cut on his face. I don't know what he could see in that fight. Every angle that we're seeing of that fight, every angle that we saw of the fight live, and I watched it again very briefly, and the, the blood was just, man, the blood was over his eye. It, it did, I, I'm like, yo, this, there's no way this cat can see anything. And so for him, I am so surprised that this fight went to 12 rounds. What do you guys think? I, I just knew for sure. Once that fourth round came, it was gonna it was it was gonna be over with no contest, whatever the case was. I'm like, there is no way, no way this fight goes to 12. And then he comes back out. And I'm just like, yo, wait a minute, you can't patch this cut up with some Vaseline. That's not gonna work. And so you don't want to take anything away from Fundora because he did his thing, man. He came in as the underdog. He was he came in as the underdog and he found a way to win the fight. And you don't want to take anything away from him. But the first round, Tim Zhu was clipping him nicely. Tim Zhu seemed like he found the, the, the timing perfectly in the first couple rounds. And then that cut. And it, 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 it was over with. Like, and he still fought back and, and still had some good moments. But you could see, man, he, he was missing a whole lot more. He was pulling back and still getting clipped. I don't know visually what the man could really see. And that's not taking anything away from Fundora and not taking a loss, a loss away from Tim Zhu. Me personally, my honest opinion, and this is why we're having this conversation. I want to hear from you. I personally thought I haven't seen too many people's discussion on what they thought about this fight just yet. I don't I never really watch too much about it until I get my thoughts out after because I don't want to cloud my mind and steal somebody else's ways. But for me, this fight should not have went 12 rounds. And I felt like on a night where Tim Zhu's team, everybody was supposed to shine, man, I felt like his corner let him down because they let that man go into that ring and fight a handicap fight. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have went 12 rounds. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. A loss is a loss. Shout out to Sebastian Fondora, man. You fought a great fight. You adjusted your game plan. You was facing adversity yourself. Your nose was broken. Blood was gushing down. You had adversity too. And you stood your ground and you did what you had to do to win the fight. But now this messes things up for Tim Zhu. You know what I'm saying? He put himself in that position. Uh, but to me, man, uh, I don't think Tim Zhu's stock falls. I think, if anything, it risen a little bit more because lesser guys wouldn't have continued that fight. Uh, but I think Tim Zhu's corner as a team, man, y'all did not put that man in the best position moving forward to win that fight. You know, that was, that was a crazy cut, man. That's a crazy cut, but that's my thoughts. Uh, let me get to the comments again. Shout out to Sebastian Fondora, man. You fought a great fight. That was the fight that we wanted to see you using your physical advantages to your advantage. And you saw what happened, but he still got hit too much. But it was a better showing, a great night for Fondora on his team, man. So shout out to him. Uh, tough loss for Tim Zhu. But 
Probably, probably one of the bloodiest fights that I've seen in this decade, man. That was crazy. That was a, 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 a lot of blood, bro. A lot of blood. Let's get to these comments, man. Let's get to these comments. Let's get to these comments. Uh, a man said, "Golden boy, man, uh, Oscar, Oscar De La Hoya is is, uh, uh, is 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 feeling. He was talking crazy. Still talking crazy. Uh, top rank because I like the blue ring. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Mark." I bet Tim Zhu, but I had him losing nine rounds. <clears throat> a lot of people slept on Fondora because he got KO'd by Mendoza. Fondora was a live dog versus Tim Zhu. Uh, I don't think I don't think anybody slept on Fondora, man. Like I just think it's a preference thing. Like I don't think anybody sleeps on anybody. I just think you prefer who you prefer. But um, as we always like, Fondora is a tough matchup for anybody because of those physical advantages. Uh, it's just how his style is that makes fights harder for him. He makes it harder for himself. Not this fight, though. I had I told my hands up, didn't see this coming. I do think the, the cut to Zoo helped and affected Zoo, but Fondora's pounce on it with range and volume, which I've criticized uh, for it. Man, we've all been saying it, man. You, you know, it's hard to be something and someone that you're not. You can always trust the history of a person. So for him to come into this fight and do something different and not abandon the game plan and stick to what was working was a very impressive fight. It's a very impressive fight. Uh, people not giving Fondora props for the two week notice. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it's dangerous for both men because they both took a two weeks notice, right? It's, it's tough for both men. He got caught with a nasty shot by Mendoza. People were kind of silly to immediately write him off. Someone with physical attributes. Yeah, as we as we as as we said in the um, breakdown, man, Mendoza was. I mean, Fandora was winning that fight. <laughs> he was winning that fight. He was winning that fight. One shot though. At any moment, you know how boxing is. It can change things. Ulterior motive for PBC: have Fandora Spence Jr. next. Uh, Spence Jr. will win, and then Spence Jr. Crawford 154. Uh, if that proves to be true, uh, we'll definitely come back to this. The cut is Tim's fault because the the round was closing and it was too early to force the fight. Uh, congratulations to Fondora. There should be no rematch. He won honestly. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Some of the Fondora's attributes, I must say. Yeah, Fondora looked almost like a six foot six Paul Williams. Man, Fondora, man, they need to remeasure that cat. He looks like he's seven foot tall. Man, he looks bigger. PBC will do Fundora Crawford and Boachuk versus Spence. I like these. I like these matchmakers right here. Crawford versus Tim in Australia. Tim becomes bigger if he beats Crawford. Rather Fundora rematch. Yeah, absolutely. But if Tim loses to Crawford again, you know that 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 puts him in a dangerous position. I think they all have to be strategic here with what's next. WBO told Fundora today negotiate with Crawford. And not Spence. I saw that. I saw that. And we're definitely going to get to that. Uh, I think I think it should be Fondora versus Bowichuk personally. But we know what happened. Spence Crawford, step up division. Everyone was over to get their tummies tickled. Yeah, I'm not expecting no Fondora Bowichuk, man. It's going to be one of those big guys. Either Fondora Spence, Fondora Crawford. It's going to be one of those big names. And I think Fondora knows as well, too, man. Like, yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm top dog now. I'm a champ now. And this is a massive payday. And it's some fights like this is tough to pass up. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if PBC has Fondora face Crawford next. They want Crawford to lose because on how he did Spence Jr. <laughs> uh, Fondora needs in and out movement with some angles. Uh Hey, Seuss, man, baby steps, man. We just we just got him jabbing, man. We just got him fighting on the outside, man. We baby steps, <laughs> baby steps. Uh, they should they should have stopped the fight at round three or four. Oh, absolutely. 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 Tim was a little arrogant, in my opinion. He wanted to put Fondora to sleep early. Uh, he should have worked more. Fondora is very big. Yeah, Fondora is massive, man. And Honestly, how he makes 154 is crazy to me. Um, I didn't really see the stuff that Tim Zhu was saying. Was he? What was he saying? He was talking reckless. He was saying easy work. Was that what he was saying? I didn't see it personally. I didn't see the interview stuff when he was talking. Um, 
Fandora Spence Jr. at the Dallas Cowboys Stadium. Same result as Spence Jr. versus Ugas. Uh, I did see Fandora's, I don't know if it's his manager or his promoter, uh, but he was talking, uh, he was talking crazy, man. He was talking heavy. He was saying, he was saying, and I'm paraphrasing, he was saying uh, uh, Crawford is not going to bring in the eyes that Spence is going to fight bring. And he thinks that Spence would be a harder fight than Bud Crawford. He seems, I don't know if he doesn't like Bud or whatever the case is, but he didn't really have anything nice to say about Bud, man. Very strange. Uh, Fundora deserves all the credit. Absolutely. Uh, Fundora couldn't bear with a busted nose, man. His mouth was open. Blood was all in his mouth, man. It was a crazy, crazy bloody performance from both men, man. They were both hurt, both facing different adversities and different things. Uh, Zhu, Losing made Vegas a lot of money. Absolutely. You know, uh, thought immediately. Admittedly, I'm kind of being hypocritical. I definitely talked S-H-I-T about Mikey Garcia not continuing after he had his nose broken from Clash of Heads against Saladillo Sassolito. Uh Man, you know, I, I'm trying to think of whose nose looked worse. Was it? Fundora or was it Wardley? <laughs> but that's the thing. This is what, you know, was so great about this fight is because both men were facing their fair share of adversity, you know, and they both showed a lot of heart, a lot of grit, and a lot of will. Like, you can't call none of these cats soft by no means, you know what I'm saying? Because they both came in and left everything. Uh, Zeus Corner overestimated the fighter possibilities after the cut and underestimated Fundora. Man, you needed to... I thought it was mandatory for having like Stitch Duran as one of the lead cut men in the corners, even if he's not associated with them. I thought that was a that was supposed to be a thing because Zeus corner just man, his they didn't do a good job protecting him, man. Very tough to watch. The doctor should be uh, face admitted murder charges. That's that charges. What's the point of being there if you let a fighter leak that? Amount of blood, nine rounds. Honestly, I was also wondering, like, man, how much strength does Tim Zhu have? Like, Fondora was losing a lot of blood, too, you know, but, man, like, that's a, man, that ring had red spots all over it. Did you see that shot when Fondora hit him with the right hook and blood spattered on the lens of the camera? I was like, yo, this is crazy. Fondora may be Spence, too. How can he beat Fundora down when Fundora loves being on the inside? You know, but it, you know, it would just be interesting because is this Fundora's new style? Or does he go back to his old ways? You know, with so many different things, and it's just speculation for now and what we'll see. Uh, Fundora brought nothing to the table and took Zeus WBO belt, undefeated record, uh, and WBC vacant belt. I blame Tim Zeus corner. I, I'm I'm with you as that. And again, we're not we're not taking anything away from Sebastian Fundora, but now it's like yo, the fight's gonna have a little bit of asterisk to it for you know supporters of the sport of boxing because we're like yo, I wonder what would have happened if Tim Zhu didn't have the cut like he did because early on it seemed like he was kind of having his way in the fight, but we can't you know it's a double-edged sword. We still we can't discredit Fundora for what he was able to do on the night. I scored in eight rounds for Fundora, uh, more value. Absolutely, I feel that. Uh, all I know is every Fundora fight in which he is the underdog, uh, you better beat the farm. You better bet the farm. That guy is undefeated as an underdog, man, and he continues to show up and to show why, man. Uh, speaking of Mendoza, how do we feel about his fight against Boacha? Kind of hard to see where his career goes. Man, uh, we, we, we touched on that a little bit earlier, man. Uh, we think that Boachuk, many people think Boachuk deserves a title shot next, but that's not going to happen. Uh, Mendoza's in a tough, tricky situation, but I think he's a fan favorite. So I think he's going to find his way in some fights, but I think he needs to rest and maybe fight a guys who are not as big as a punchers, at least for one fight before he finds a way back in it. Uh, JJ, what's going on? Uh, J Depp. 
forgot to say, appreciate you taking the time to tune in, man. Tim Zoo isn't getting enough credit for outlanding Fondora in seven rounds and not complaining about the cards. Uh, I don't think anybody is uh, not giving Tim Zoo his credit, man. I think I think we're all in the agreement that Tim Zoo does deserve the credit of the toughness and the grit. And for him wanting to fight, if you ask a fighter if they're ready to go back in there, despite what may happen, Tim Zhu's face could have been caved in and he's going to want to get out there and keep fighting. That's just the type of guy that he is. I mean, these guys are warriors. And when you have a, a, a guy who is sometimes too tough for his own good as a corner team, you got to say, nah, man, look, we got to got to play it safe here. I think personally, uh, Tim Zoo's corner, as many people said, man, I think they let him down. I think they let him down. I love Spence. Probably my, uh, he's probably my favorite current boxer, but I'll put my paycheck on the towering Inferno over Spence. I don't think Spence has too much more of those war fights left in him, man. I really don't. I really don't. I really don't. 154 now has become hot and not 147. Man, 147 used to be the that division. It used to be that division. It, I don't even know what that division is about now. You know, uh, I'd say we, we've been hearing Boots' name for quite some time. We still don't got an opponent for Boots. Uh, I thought it was going to be no contest or six cards. Man, I, f I feel like we all thought the same thing, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, he has until the end of the month to agree on defense against Crawford. Uh, you know, he 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 might probably move towards what's gonna make him the most money, man. So, uh, you know, he might make he might vacate that belt. Who knows, brother Francisco? What's going on, man? Yeah, man. Um, decided to switch things up today just to see uh, if this time worked a little bit better for everybody, man. I know seven thirty is a little bit later, so just wanted to see Monday plus. You know, I wanted to talk about the fights earlier. <laughs> I wanted to talk about the fights earlier, man. Uh, always good to see you, my brother. Uh, start with the outside fighting and movement only with Fundora. With those measurements, I'd lean towards only his strengths. But most opponents would be done by the time they get inside, man. Absolutely. Jirangel, Leo fight. Uh, I did, I did, I did. When is that? When is that? Oh, I did see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw Angel Lee. Yeah, Leo fought a nice, nice good fight last last time out, man. Let's keep it. Ooh, I never seen blood hit the camera like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Me both, man. Um, wait, wait. Something hit me. Something hit me. I did see another gruesome fight, and I'm trying to remember it. Uh, it was like 2008. I don't remember who it was. Uh, but the guy got cut on the side of his lip. He took a left hand side of his lip and his lip was like busted. And immediately that lip was hanging off and blood was gushing down. Like he was swallowing blood and they waved off the fight. I forgot who it was. It was like 2008, 2009 is when it happened. That one was a bad one as well too, because his lip was like hanging off. I was like, whoa, that was scary, bro. That was scary. In the second round, it was 27 punches landed for Tim. Uh, Fundora, seven punches landed, man. Uh, thoughts on the PBC prelim fight? Uh, man, that Cuban fighter is very skilled, man. That 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 man can fight. He's going to have a very good career as well, too. Uh, Carmel was tested here. And I like, usually you don't see for a young prospect who is very high up here, you don't really see them in the fire this early in their career. But I think it goes to show what type of confidence and belief that that man, that young man has. He didn't have to take this fight, man, but that was a tough fight. It was a very good fight. And a rematch I would love to see later down the road. I think both of these guys are going to have very good careers, but that was a very, very, very good fight. Uh, it sounds like people here haven't heard the latest that Fandora is honoring the rematch instead of Spence. Now, I have heard that, JJ, but I've also heard that it was just a verbal agreement. And this is the sport of contracts and obligations, man. Uh, until we see it on paper, man, I'm not, we can't rule anything out. So uh, I've just heard it was a verbal agreement with the rematch with Zoo. 
but I don't really care too much about verbal agreements until I see the contract and we see the dates, man. We can't, you know, words only mean so much. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate you sharing that, though. Honest, judges, if they gave the fight to Tim, no one would have bothered. Yeah, uh, uh, I, don't think, I don't think so either. Now that Fundora used reach, he can use inside fight to confuse fighters using both styles. Yeah, absolutely. But I think it would be a little bit tough to jump in and to jump out. I don't think he is there to do that simultaneously or be able to switch like that. But I do like the adjustments. Abdullah Mason, Carmel Morton. Uh, I think that would be a great fight. Uh, I'd wait. I'd want him to wait a little bit, maybe sometime next year, man. Uh, Abdullah Mason. Abdullah Mason's that man too. It reminded me of that 70s horror movie, Carrie. That was some gruesome and scary stuff when I was a kid, man. Uh, I remember that movie, man. You're absolutely, absolutely right. That was a crazy fight, man. Everybody, everybody forgot that Fendora was replaced. He don't deserve the opportunity for the belt. Also, Tim Zhu camp was uh, focused for someone like Fendora. I think Zhu deserves the rematch. You know, uh, you got to seize the opportunity, though. You know, we, we've, say, we've said during that breakdown, man, uh, we didn't think Fundora was deserving of the shot, but it is what it is. And when he got the title shot, he made the most of it. You know, deserving or not, he made the most of it. When I saw Zoo leaking blood, I thought of a club scene in Blade Boy. Shout out to Blade, man. What a movie. <laughs> what a movie. But that, that year, <laughs> I can see why you went there. I can see why you went there. Uh, Carmel Mona is a monster. He's going to be extremely terrifying when he gets older. Man, he took a dangerous fight. He took a dangerous fight. Uh, but love to see it. Love to see when a young fighter isn't afraid of the fire. Better be at. Yeah. Yeah. Better be at. Oh, yeah, with that cut right in the center of his face. That man, that man fights better when he sees blood. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to get to the rest of these comments, but let's keep the show moving forward because we got a couple more things, a couple more things to touch on, a couple more fights to touch on. Uh, another bloodbath, right, Fabio? Um, I, I'm going to go back to the comments, but again, we just got to move the show forward, man. We got to move the show forward. Uh, this was... Great fight for Flazer Clark, man. This was the version that I wanted to see. This was the version that I wanted to see. We knew he has the amateur pedigree. We knew the boxing ability. We knew that he was skilled. Absolutely. We knew Wardley may not be the most technically sound guy, but we knew he's a guy that's going to take a risk. He's a guy that has power, and he's a guy that's going to try to force an uncomfortable fight. And this was... A very great fight, a nice matchup fight, and a fight where both men were spent. You see Fraser Clark at the end of the fight, how the man just wanted to sit down? <laughs> you know, so I don't have anything, like, bad to say about this fight, man. It was just exciting. It was exciting. It was an exciting fight. Uh, it was a fight that I wouldn't have been mad if Clark won. I wouldn't have been mad if Wardley won. I'm not mad at the draw. I think some of those rounds were that close, even with the knockdown of Wardley. Wardley kept getting caught with these uppercuts. Man, I thought Clark fought the most complete fight that he's fought. I thought Wardley showed probably the most heart that he's shown in a fight. I thought it was a very well-matched fight. Like, I would love to see the rematch, maybe not next, but I would love to see it a little bit later just to see where they're at. I mean, Fraser Clark, man, that man's nose looked like it was broken as well, too. Blood was gushing down his face. There were moments where I'm like, man, he looks exhausted. And he probably was. But he didn't fall. He didn't fade. He still tried to punch. He still tried to win the fight. I thought Fraser Clark did a better job of holding himself uh, energy standpoint. He was much more controlled, not too much wasted motion, or as sometimes Wardley was just trying to, to, to land a big shot to get the man off of him. So thought it was a good fight, man, a good heavyweight fight and a good way to close out the weekend uh, of boxing, especially in that division, man. So I like both of these guys. Uh, I thought Wardley was going to edge it. I thought he was going to win it. I thought he was going to stop him. But again, I was very impressed with Frazier Clark and how he performed. This was the performance that I wanted to see, man. I had a lot of questions about him. Some of those questions for me were answered. Uh, back to the comments. Let me know what you guys thought of this fight. 
Eric, take care. Great show. Time to spend some cute quality time with Mrs. R. Shout out to Mrs. R, man. I'm about to go do that uh, with my wifey after this, man. So I appreciate you taking the time, my brother. Always love and appreciation and respect, man. Enjoy the rest of your day and the Monday. Uh, Pandora. <laughs> Come on, man. We got to respect the man. He's Pandora, man. We can't be called him Pandora. That man was not soft, but I got what you say, man. He did do uh, an, uh, an amazing job. Antonio Margarita ripped the top off the dude's ear in a fight. I got to go back and see that. I don't remember that. That sounds crazy. Pandora did an amazing job. Absolutely. Uh, two of the biggest main events from the weekend were blood baths. And two of the biggest... Events from the weekend went the full round. You know what I'm saying? So this was a it was a, yo, it was a good weekend of boxing overall, man. That's what I'm talking about. Pitbull must have have a hard head. Roley hit him with everything, and he didn't even budge. Look, I don't know what type of type of chin Pitbull has, man, but it's a dangerous one. He had the he had he has the chin that Joy Jones had before he found a guy that tested that chin enough times. For it to be a little bit softer. Let's see, Wardley Clark, early heavyweight fight of the year contender. Clark impressed me, but the rest of the card was underwhelming, in my opinion. Yeah, it wasn't the greatest card overall, but shout out to Chris Congo, man. Uh, 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 he, he, he fought himself a great fight, put himself in a nice, uh, good fights moving forward, but uh, good fight, man. I have Clark winning by two rounds. I hear that. Fletcher Clark proved me wrong. I thought Worley would stop him inside six rounds. If anything, Worley struggled with Clark power. Man, usually, look, look, I'm not saying Worley has the greatest defense by no means, but usually like, he's a little better than that. You know what I'm saying? A little better than that. But he was getting clipped up, man. Clark was very sharp that night, man. Those uppercuts, he was just very crafty in there with how he was getting and slipping his shots in. Again, I've been tough on on Fraser Clark, you know, especially in the breakdown, man. And, and so I was really impressed by that. You know, I wanted to see a performance by that. I wanted to see a performance when he got knocked down and you got to let that heart and that will show. We know you can box. We know you got skill, but do you have the grit in an uncomfortable position to not quit? And he didn't quit. Neither man quit. So again, very impressed by Fraser Clark in that fight. Clark would have won fight if he wasn't for point deduction. It was a low blow, but he deducted straight away without warning, which is harsh. Yeah, yeah, I forgot I forgot about the point deduction. That would have definitely sealed it. Because, again, like he looked to be carrying his energy very well to me. Uh, rematch sells easily now, absolutely. It makes it that much more exciting. UK fight of the year. Turn out lips, lips busted. Yeah, I think, I think, I think that was the one that I was talking about. You know what I'm talking about, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate that name. That's exactly what I was talking about. Chris Congo, greatest performance, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. He, he was boxing very smart. Thoughts on Ben Whitaker? He showboats too much in the ring. He was on the card. Yeah, I saw the fight briefly. You know, your boy, uh, uh, your boy was on the grill yesterday, so I was watching it on my phone, but I couldn't burn the food, man. I was grilling, so I didn't want it to burn. So I briefly saw a couple rounds. Um, you know, it, 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 this, it, this will be better for Ben Whitaker fights that go the distance to see some of the stuff. It's like, yo, showboating is not going to, it can only get you too far once the competition picks up. Uh, but I did see one of the shots, at least it looked like it to me. It looked like he got stunned a little bit and he showboated it off. He got caught with the left hand and he rocked to the left and paused and then rocked back. It looked like he got slightly buzzed, I'm not saying it hurt him, but it looked like he took a shot that he felt. So, you know, a win's a win, but I'm glad that he got the rounds in because every fight isn't going to be easy, man. Clark proved to be uh, bolder than I thought. You and me both. Uh, Victor Ortiz, Andre Berto, uh, won seven or seven, seven or eight knockdowns between both of them. Man, that reminds me of Jose Zapata when he fought. Oh, I can't remember that guy's name, but they had like six or seven knockdowns between them before they won by stoppage. Congo beating Marku, great upset. Uh, I really hate. 
I really rate Ben Whitaker, boxing ability, special, talented, future pay-per-view star, but showboating in the ring will cost him. Yeah, and 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 it just, you know, it makes people go against him. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I'm glad he got the rounds in. I think he needed those rounds. I wasn't surprised by the Mark who lost, man. I thought that was a good fight. That was a good fight. Uh, there's a lot of bad blood between those two. Expected Clark to get stopped, but he showed great heart and perseverance and almost won himself the fight. Fabio would definitely look underwhelming, though. You know, he just looked a little tired, man. Um, Congo style was all wrong for Marco. Marco couldn't cut off the ring. Nah, absolutely correct. He got jabbed up every single round, made some mistakes, man. Shout out to Chris Congo because uh, I, think he, I think he needed that win. For once, Whitaker got caught a few times and got caught cleanly. Very athletic guy. That's the one. Yep, that's the one. That's the one. That was a crazy fight. Exciting fight. It just sucked that that fight was in the pandemic uh, because nobody really got to see it. I felt like that crowd would have went crazy. Uh, didn't I haven't seen this fight yet, but wanted you guys to share anything if you have anything on this fight again. I haven't seen it yet. Um, I heard uh, Zerto put a great performance. Uh, he won unanimously. I, the cards were kind of wide. Again, I didn't see it. I don't have much to say about it because I didn't see it yet. I'm going to watch it, but I haven't seen it yet. But for those that have seen this fight, I wanted to get uh, your guys' opinion on it so you can speak your piece, give your thoughts on Zerto's performance. Uh, let's hit the comments. What do you think of Smith over Zepeda? That was a good knockout. There's a new player at 140. Uh, I thought it was a great performance, man. It was a beautifully timed body shot right to the sternum, <laughs> right to the sternum. Uh, and you can't, you can't deny how much more stacked that 140 is now. You know, a, a statement like that against Zepeda, man, puts Dalton Smith right there. So going to be interesting to see who he fights next, man. i um, very impressed by how he performed. Really, really well done. Ryan Robinson, man. What's going on, man? Appreciate that. Uh, super chat, man. Much love and appreciation for that, man. I appreciate your generosity. Uh, Whitaker opponent was tough. Needs good sparring. Yeah, man. He, he, he did not back down. He did not back down. He came to fight. Um, and he, you know, he showed that perseverance and results himself because he got knocked down, right? But these rounds are good for Ben Whitaker, man. Question for the chat room. More excited for Fury Usyk? Better Piab Baval. What do y'all think? Man, I think the excitement for Fury and Usyk kind of died down a little bit because that fight was moved. You know, I, so for me right now, I'm more excited for Better Piab and Baval. Personally, that could change. Um, but... Yeah, I'm, 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 as of right now, for me, uh, better be at Baval, man. What about everybody in the chat? What about everybody in the chat? Uh, my man Ben says, Isaac Chamberlain gave Vidal grief for his performance, although he had some performances against the guy, the same guy in law. Chamberlain actually seemed to have more trouble. Yeah, you know, uh, you never, you never want to give these guys to make them feel too good. So you got to talk down to him a little bit, man. So, you know, I always like the back and forth. Ramirez completely outboxed him. Uh, Arson inactive for two years and it showed. Not shocked by a result one bit. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. I'm going to go back and check it out. I haven't seen it, but wanted to get you guys' uh, voice to talk about it. Better be av or Bival. Better be av Bival. Uh, the cut shenanigans turned the fans off. Uh, absolutely. It was so, you know, we were all looking forward to it. And then it just, boom, right in your face. We don't even, uh, <laughs> but I feel like it will go through because the loser has to forfeit a lot of money. And one thing about Tyson Fury is he don't like losing money. Pablo, appreciate that, my man. Appreciate that generosity. Uh, many thanks for your passionate work and being available to spend time with the community. Much appreciated. Uh, man, I appreciate that, man. Again, appreciate everybody that has tapped in uh, since day one, man. I appreciate it. Again, want to wanted to bring the lives more this year so we can be more interactive and to just talk about the fights in real time, man. 
Uh, so I appreciate that generosity, man. Much love and appreciation. Uh, Zero versus Arson looks, uh, looks suspicious. Arson didn't let go of his hands. I thought both Chamberlain and Vidal performance were the same. Both won all 12 rounds versus Lawal. Uh, his cruiserweight gatekeeper, gatekeeper, gatekeeper waiting for him to something uh, like waiting for a snail. That's funny, man. All right, let's move the chat forward. I am going to get back to the comments. Um, here's what, real quick, I know we touched on it briefly, but I did hear Fundora versus Crawford was ordered today. I know a bunch of people already talked about, shared their parts on it earlier, but just wanted to get real quickly, brief, brief, briefly here. Uh, I did see Fundora Crawford was ordered. Doesn't mean the fight is going to go through, but it was ordered. But what would you guys prefer and watch more? Is it, is it, is it Spence and Crawford? Uh, Zoo, not Zoo. Fundora Crawford, Fundora Spence. What would you like to see more? Because I personally think that it's going to be one of these guys that we see uh, Fundora fight next. Now I know the verbal agreement to Zoo was said, and I think that will go through, but that doesn't mean that it will be next. Uh, back in the comments, uh, Bival, better be at, as I have doubts, Fury, yes, it goes ahead. If it goes ahead, Usyk outboxes Fury. Man, I think the, um, I think the, I think if someone pulls out, man, they got to forfeit that I think it's like 10 million. I don't see Tyson Fury want to vacate that 10 million. But again, it's Tyson Fury, so we never know. <laughs> Better be at Brave is a great matchup, but there's nothing like being the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. The last one was Lennox Lewis in 1999. Yeah, that makes sense. So we're talking from a historical standpoint. Remember when the heavyweight champ, man, is usually like the baddest man on the planet, big dogs like that used to be the thing. You know, I'm, I'm, and we haven't gotten in it so long. It's like historical purposes, it probably speak a lot more volume. Absolutely. Uh, better be able to Anyway, the British clown is getting in shape. We might see an interesting fight. You know, he seems to be taking this fight seriously. He sees the severity of it. So, you know, we'll see. Hard opponent to make something happen against. Absolutely. Uh, give me Zerto versus Wilder. <laughs> Man, Wilder uh, uh, busy with Zhang, man. Wilder busy with Zhang. Uh, give me Zerto and the Midnight Train, Richard Reactpo. Give me that fight. Give me that fight. Uh, Fandora Crawford. Uh, Spanish should fight Tim Zhu if the Fandora rematch with Zhu falls through. Uh, PBC will not pass up a big payday. That is a fact. Crawford versus Spence Jr. too. Spence Jr. will need to win an impression. Fa impressive fashion against a formidable opponent to sell a rematch versus Crawford. Fandora versus Crawford. I think Spence needs a tune-up before. Man, Spence said he don't take tune-ups. <laughs> he don't take tune-ups. I think he should, though. But I respect the fact that he wants to go in there for the big dogs. Usyk gets slept under five. Nuri gets slept in 11. Frank gets slept in seven. Haney gets slept in like three rounds. Yo, that's a bold statement, my man. That's a bold statement. I ain't got much to say about it. I like the boldness of it. Uh, we're going to see, but I like it. I like it. Fury does nothing for me. He's just a big dosser to me. Man, he's been saying that for so long. I don't even know what a dosser means. Maybe maybe my man Chris can tell me what a dosser is because he's been, he been saying it for years now. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means, but it sounds disrespectful. <laughs> it sounds disrespectful. Uh, you got Ryan Garcia knocking out Devin Haney. You know, uh, I'm not going to count out Ryan Garcia completely, man. Um, obviously in boxing, you know, we can't count out anybody. We don't know how it's going to go, you know? And I think Ryan Garcia has a lot of physical attributes and he's a talented cat, but man, he, 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 he's in tough. He's in tough. He looks in great shape. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, man, I, my man, the wise, we got to it, it was so bold, I got to say it again, and I like the boldness. Like, I'm all for it. My man, the wise, says Usyk gets slept under five. Luis Neri gets slept in 11th. Frank 
gets slept by Tank in seven. Haney gets slept in like three rounds. So to answer uh, your question, he does think Devin Haney is going to get slept by Ryan Garcia. Tim Zhu, Xander, Zayas. That's a very interesting matchup right there. Uh, for whatever reason, man, I don't see them putting Xander Zayas in a tough, tough fight like that just yet. Uh, we'll see. Zoo Fundor rematch, Thurman Spence, uh, Crawford, Lara. Man, I, feel, I, I mean, I don't even know when we would even see Keith Thurman next, bro. Like, you know, the other two, like I, I could see that happening, except I don't think Lara is going to come down to 154. Um, yeah, interesting, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, bold, bold. Love it, love it. Andre Ward claims the plan was to move up to cruiserweight to fight AJ, but he chose to retire instead. I'm not trolling either. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that's very interesting, man. And I like Son of God, Andre Ward. But that's a, that's a big statement. That's a big statement. That's a big statement. Uh, some of the fights happening this weekend. Um, Richard Hitchens, Gustavo Lemos, big punching pressure fighter. Uh, Diego Pacheco versus Sean McCallman. Sky Nicholson, Sarah Mafoud, Mafoud. A couple others happening as well, too. Uh, not going to spend too, too much time here. Just want to get your thoughts on them. Which ones are you most exciting for? Do you guys personally see an upset this weekend? Uh, I got the Hitchinson Lemos fight up right now. Pacheco uh, coming tomorrow. Same with probably the Sky prediction coming up tomorrow as well, too. Um, I think Lemos, you know, could cause some problems for Hitchens. Uh, that pressuring and the power type of style, the aggression. Uh, but we're going to see. Um, I think Pacheco uh, and Sean could be more of a tougher fight, and more of a 50-50-er fight uh, for me personally. Not saying it's 100% 50. I'd probably say 60-40 uh, Pacheco. Uh, Sean is no joke, man. Uh, it's a great opportunity for him. Great opportunity for him. Uh, uh, he might not be as well known, but I think he's going to put together a great game plan that could give Pacheco a tougher fight than most people think. Real quick, I want to get your guys' thoughts on it before we go to the Q&A portion of the show. Uh, let's see. Ryan training with Elvis Presley. <laughs> oh, Pablo, you're cracking me up, bro. Uh, seems like he's going to be KO or he will uh, KO Haney. Yeah, that possibly could be it, man. I don't think he outboxes Haney. I think he's going to need to get the stoppage, but type of precision and accuracy that Haney has been having, man. Uh, he could KO uh, Garcia as well. Crawford Lowry at 160. I just don't see Crawford going up that much, man. Uh, if he if he slapped him with the head gear. <laughs> we need to set up a boxing group chat. Man, that's something I was having in the works that I'm trying to fully finalize, man. Uh, we're going to get that started. We're going to get that going. We're going to get that going, man. Uh, Hitch's name is Fight Weekend. I really like this fight, man. Uh, guys, I strongly suggest you to take the Tito Lemo seriously. He's a tough cat. Yeah, he 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 is. It's a great opportunity for him to showcase him. You know, he may not be talked about as much, uh, but he is solid, man. That man can fight. Heavy pressure, aggressive, uh, very powerful. Uh, he, he's not trying to come in there. Uh, and, and lay down by no means. If he catches Hitchens with a couple clean shots, could make things very, very, very interesting. Uh, he's a very good fighter, man. Uh, and, and, and if Hitchens, who is, he says he is, and who I think that he is personally, uh, he'll find a way to come out on top in this fight. You know, uh, going to be interesting, man. But uh, Lemos, he's, he's, he's legit. He's legit. He's legit. Crawford Lara would be at uh, 160 for Lara's WBL. Yeah, I just don't see, I just don't see Bud doing that, man. 154, skipping 154, and then going to 160. I don't know if Lara is a big enough name for Bud to take it that seriously. Uh, I think it would be a good fight, but I don't think that fight happens. Uh, might put some money on Garcia by the K. I mean, why not if the odds are right, right? I wouldn't be surprised if Lemos uh, KOs Hitchens in the early rounds. 
you know, he's 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 got to be able to cut off the ring, man. Hitchens is so disciplined and so sharp. It, it, it's going to take much more than just power uh, to break him down, man. Hitchens, that man can fight too. But I like Lemos. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do on the big stage in front of the people, man. He can he can. It's a it's a it's a big opportunity for him. Prime Bud versus Prime Mayweather is a 50 50 fight. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But you know, I think um, if I had to say in this one, man, I'm 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 taking a, a, a I'm taking Money Mayweather, man. Watch Ryan outbox Haney. Haney has to go full Sweet P versus Rototo in the late rounds. Shout out to Sweet P. Shout out to Sweet P, man. <laughs> Hitchens points. Pacheco eighth round. Nicholson points. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I'm I haven't made Pacheco and and Nicholson, but. I'm leaning towards that as well, too. Uh, but we'll see. I got to watch a couple more tape on Sean to see what he's about. Hitchens needs to have pitch perfect plan to beat Lemos, though. Man, he can't be caught lacking. He can't be caught with his hands down. He can't be pulling back. But the, the, if, 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 if Hitchens fights the way how he's been fighting, man, the discipline and the composure that he's been able to keep, man, I'm, I'm, I, it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to, to – he's just – he's not going to overcommit. Like, he's very disciplined, very strategic, and it's hard to get him out of character. But if it is going to happen, Lemos could be the guy to do it, man. That pressure and that style, man. Hitchens will not lose. He is one of Matchroom top stars. Uh, I think he's a dark dark horse in the division, man. I think he's probably one of the guys that's often forgotten about to me, in my opinion. Uh, let's keep it forward as we almost come to the end of the show. Cool down segment. Uh, any questions, any topics that you guys want to touch on here? Uh, let's touch on it next. Uh, let me get back to the comments. Janet Beck, future undisputed at 160 pounds. I know, man, you've been, you been, you been high on Janet Beck, man. Uh, and I think he's a very good fighter. Am I as high on him as you are? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not fully sold on Janabek um, personally. Remember Ryan Garcia fought Davis. Ain't going to be that one that fights Haney. Ryan Garcia is going to be in in, in there in full fledged. Yeah, like I, I, I completely understand and I expect him that, you know, and it's a a better fight stylistically for Ryan Garcia, because when you're fighting Javante Tank Davis, like you got to be cautious, man. He doesn't throw a whole lot. He's not a volume puncher, but when he throws, like you feel it. And that could be the one shot that takes you out. And so you've got to fight a little bit cautious when you're fighting Tank Davis, you know, Haney, uh, he's, there's a couple rounds in Haney's fights through the history that he does lack a little bit. He does lack a little bit in a couple rounds, and you can make him pay. But can he make him pay? What's the game plan for Ryan Garcia? Will he stick to his game plan because he's known to adjust when he doesn't need to and puts himself in danger? But, again, I think the man is physically capable of beating Devin Haney. But will he? Can he on the night? I'm just not sure about it. Uh, Hitchens or Lemos to face Matthias. Or Paro. Man, I like that. I like that. I like that, man. Uh, thoughts on UK, UK winning against Connor Ben, meaning Ben suspension. I did see that. Um, honestly, Peter, I, I wasn't really following Connor Ben too much in this whole thing. Um, Chris is in here. He can give a much better explanation about it. He's been following it a little bit more, uh, but at least he's been cleared. You know, Dillian White went to court, fought it. He's been cleared. You know, if you're doing things the right way, then it is what it is. You know, boxing is one of those sports where you can, you know, you can make a couple mistakes like this and still come back and still get big fights and still get pushed forward. Uh, it's different in track and field, my background, right? In track and field, you get caught once, Yo, it's over with. You're on a four-year, three-year suspension, and, 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 and it's over with. But in boxing, they seem to be a little bit lenient in some ways. 
Uh, we got in a way versus Neri on Monday, May 6th on a Monday. Yeah, that's not really too out of the ordinary for uh, uh, Naoya, you know, with him being, you know, uh, the time zone being so different. He's used to fighting in, you know, at the middle, in the middle of the week or at the start of the week. Uh, Pacheco needs a big, big name if he beats his opponent this weekend, potentially Berlanga, uh, since he's not fighting Canelo. Uh, yeah, man, I think I think this would be a great win for Pacheco. There's a lot at stake here, man. Uh, an undefeated fighter is a confident fighter, dangerous fighter, because, you know, when you don't know what to lose, you don't want to lose. And, 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 and Sean knows this is a great opportunity for him. Uh, Pacheco has been improving defensively. But he's not the greatest defensive fighter. We know what he can do offensively, but defensively, there's going to need to be some improvement. So we'll see. Oh, Peter, no comment. We all had enough. It's a complete mess way. It's been handled two years and no clarification. Ben finding loopholes to avoid strict liability. I got to default to my man, Chris, because he's been following that much more than I have. The current generation of top heavyweights are in their late 30s and phasing out. Who takes over from the next the next generation? Tor or Anderson Torres, Jeff Sanchez. I'm still not sure how good Richard Torres is personally because the guys that he's been fighting, he's just been just been knocking them out, and they really haven't been that good. You know what I'm saying? So I don't I don't really know how good he is just yet. Uh, since we're talking about heavyweights. Give me a second to pull up uh, the heavyweight division rankings right now. And we're going to try to keep it with the guys who are in that age group, as my brother Francisco is talking about. Uh, let me pull up the one, the most recent one. Give me a second here. Okay. So, my man, brother Francisco says from guys who are a little bit older. So Usyk, a couple more fights in, so we take him out. Uh, I don't remember how old Hergovic is. Uh, Joshua, getting a little bit older. Parker, getting a little bit older. Zhang, older. Uh, Frank Sanchez, put him in there. Anderson, put him in there. Uh, let's see. Let's see who else they got here. Uh, they got Justice Hooney in there. Uh, Daniel Dubois still in there. Effie Ajagba still in there. Um, yeah, I man, I think the heavyweight division is very much open, man, honestly. I think some of the, the cruiserweights who could come up in heavyweight as well, too. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bacoli, but he's a little bit older. Wardley. Fraser Clark. So, I mean, there's there's... There's still, once the top guys in the older generation phases out, it makes things very interesting. That's a that's a very good question. If Garcia shows up, he will win by KO uh, by the way of left hook in the eight rounds. Yeah, maybe, man. I'm 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 still rocking with Haney, man. I've I've uh, I still think he's gonna get it done. I'm uh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Do you think His Excellency Turkey Al Sheik will ever become a boxing promoter? Man, I don't even think he needs to. Man, he, he he can just keep doing his thing right now, right where he is, being the position that he's in, and keep things pushing. If Garcia, uh, Pacheco versus Blango makes sense for both. Hopefully we see that next. Biden Pacheco wins. Pacheco gets stoppage. Sean, in my opinion, is very slow for Pacheco's face. He fights beautifully. Yeah, but, you know, Sean could rise to the occasion, you know. Is Matthias signed to fight yet? If so, yeah, Matthias is fighting Liam Paro. Big baby, if he takes it seriously, uh, and if he's focused, man, I, you know, he seems to say he's not going to fight past 27. And honestly, I believe him. We need Torres uh, versus rival in the Olympics. Who was his rival? Uh, no, uh, wasn't it? Just, uh, his name starts with a J. I can't remember. Per, I can't remember at the back of my head. But didn't Torres get dropped in the Olympics? Correct me if I'm wrong in that. Matthias Paro confirmed. Yes, yes. Heavyweight division is dead. I missed the 1990s, man. Hey, those were some great times in the heavyweight division, wasn't it? Uh, I just see the way Pacheco sleeps. People see him doing that to Sean. Absolutely. I mean, you can't rule it out. He's won 17 of his 20 fights by stoppage, man. Uh, that would make sense. 
I like the Cuban flash, Frank Sanchez. Yeah, I think he needs to start getting into those big fights right now. Uh, June 15th, that's going to be a great fight, man. I'm looking forward to that one. Jared Anderson, Jai Apataya. Uh, Jai Apataya all day, every day against Jared Anderson. Cabral Sanchez got – I did see that. I think that's going to be a very good fight. I'm going to the Jared Anderson fight next week in Corpus Christi. Man, you got to let me know what the atmosphere is like, man. Jared Anderson's got a tough opponent, but that's what's up, man. I think that's going to be a great fight. Mitchell Torres needs to sit in his punches, and he has speed and volume. He has a lot of things that work in his favor. He's got good power. Uh, he's explosive, good agility, good speed. Um, but, you know, it's going to be interesting, man, because we haven't really seen him in a true test just yet. And I'm waiting for him to be matched up against a test. Without Turkey, Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren be at each other's throats. Uh, and you said it best right here, man. Money absolutely talks. I don't think Turkey needs to do anything but to continue doing what he is doing. <laughs> Man, last, uh, uh, any last questions before we finish up with the quote of the week? And we will close on out again real quick. Uh, appreciate everybody for taking the time to tune in. Uh, do you guys like this time slot better than Tuesday's nighttime uh, slot? If you like this better, we will continue at this time moving forward. But let me know. And for those that are in the chat now, uh, uh, just let me know and we will continue pushing with everything. I'm waiting on the MOV and round Prosper Hitches and Pacheco fight going to parlay his decision. Uh, you know, you, you can't, you can't, you can't argue with that, man. You can't argue with that. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's the name. Heard, uh, can the boss very well has a great fee for huge man. Six to seven. Woo. Six, seven, two, 60. Yo, that is a heavyweight. Yo, that's, I didn't know he was that big. Yo, that's, that's scary. Jeez. Uh, how do you think Spence would go against Bohatchuk? Man, you know, um, I, 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 just, I just think it's which version of Spence that we get. Uh, if we're basing it off, if we're basing it strictly off each other's last performance, then you got to say Bohatchuk, man. He's, he's, he's bigger. He's... He's got the momentum. He's got the good pop. And, and Spence didn't look good in his last fight. If I had to say right now today, and I like the big fish, uh, I would have to say Bohatchuk, but uh, I wouldn't count Spence out. Um, it you know just depends on the type of mentality he's in as well. Turkey's planning a fight card in Wembley, which is music to my ears. And you know that card's going to be stacked. Uh, appreciate you, my man. Always, always love and appreciation, my man. Uh, do you think Zoo would have knocked out Fundora if the cut didn't happen? Um, I, I don't know, man. Uh, I think I think it would have went the full 12, but I think it would have went the opposite way. Like, I don't want to take anything away from Sebastian Fundora because he was the better man on the night and he won the fight. Great game plan. Never want to take anything away from him. But I do think that outcome would have been a little bit different if Zoo didn't have uh, the, the adversity that he faced as well, too. Uh, heavyweight after Fury, Usyk, AJ going to be wide open in my – absolutely, absolutely. Those guys are getting much older. Uh, but, you know, in the sports, in the sports world, there's always going to be a young gun coming to try to assert themselves in some form. Uh, but, again, much love to everybody, man. I appreciate each of you. Uh, we're going to close out with the quote of the week. Again, if this time slot works better for everybody, you like this time better. Uh, I know for everybody international, uh, like Chris and Pablo and others, it's a little bit uh, palatable because it's not as late for them. So if this works better, man, uh, we can definitely rock with this time and this day moving forward. You know what? I do like the Monday after the weekend because the thoughts are still fresh. And it makes for an even greater discussion. Uh, this week's quote of the week. I didn't even realize we've been on here now for coming up on an hour and 50 minutes, man. Uh, that time really has flown by. Quote of the week. There are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. Isn't that a nice um, uh, uh, thing for Sebastian Fondora? You know, learning from 
him getting stopped by Mendoza, a fight that he was winning. And he got clipped at the wrong time, got hit, lost, hit the, hit the canvas, and found a way to learn from that, from that failure, from that fight, and come out and be something different to improve and to get better. What I like about certain things, especially in this quote, man, it just makes me think, man, you never know when that opportunity is going to come. You never know when your name is going to be called. You never know when all of your hard work is going to pay off. We don't know that, but it's not us to know when something is going to happen. We just got to prepare for when that could happen. I've always said, and whenever I go to speak, whether you know it's corporate, that's what I do, right? That's what I do full time. For those that don't know, um, I'm a speaker by heart, right? And you go, and I go speak corporate. I say, look, you cannot control what happens to you at any given moment. What you can control is your preparation and the effort that you put towards something and learning from experiences and using those moments that didn't work out, extracting the good from it and using it for the next time to come. So when you think about positions where it may not have went in your favor, I live by this, I live by this quote um, that I've written in my book. Uh, I've said in life, man, it's, it's not what happens to you, it's what you choose to do next beyond the loss, beyond the failure, beyond the heartbreak, beyond the setback, beyond the delays, right? Because we always have a choice in what we choose to do next. We can choose to lie down. We can choose to be discouraged. And some of you in your life experiences, you may have all of the valid points to be discouraged when you've been hit, when you've been knocked down, when you've been set back, when you have a situation that didn't turn out in your favor. But every single one of you on this call, on this show, on this, on this live right now, you're a fighter, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why we like boxing. Yeah, you can bet a little bit of money on it, make a little bit of money, absolutely. But you like that warrior spirit, right? The reason why we like that Fundora and Tim Zhu fight so much and we can appreciate it so much is because we see two guys who are prepared for the best that they can, who put the work into the best of their ability, and they put together a great fight, right? This is going to be a learning lesson for all of them as much as it is a learning lesson and a comparison for how you have lived your life and how I have lived my life. Everything that hasn't worked our way is going to push us and help us moving forward. Just because things happen in our lives that we didn't ask for doesn't mean it doesn't serve a purpose in our lives. I wanna thank each of you for taking the time to tune into the show. I want to thank each of you for taking the time to share your thoughts. I want to thank each of you for taking the time, man, to always show love to the channel. And I want to thank each of you that continue to rock with me. I don't take your ears or your eyes for granted. I try to, you know, make these videos as exciting as I can. I try to give it as much information as I can. And I try to be as non-biased as I can, because at the end of the day, whether we agree or we don't agree, we can still be respectful and still talk boxing. We won't always agree, but man, we can still have great discussions. And that's what I wanted the channel to be about, man. God bless each of you. I hope the weekend treated you well. Uh, for everybody that celebrates Easter, even if you don't, I hope that they treated you well and you got some time to recover and to get things moving forward for the week ahead. Much love to each of you. God bless. Uh, and we will definitely see you next time. Maybe we'll just come back on Monday. I think Monday works a little bit better than Tuesday. Much love, everybody, man. Uh, keep the faith, keep the strength, and definitely stay encouraged. And we'll definitely see you next week.